weird, I titled it, I have a beautiful baby, why do I feel so bad? Um, if any of you have ever suffered from postnatal depression or anxiety, then you would understand exactly where that sentiment is coming from. It actually is a direct quote from um, a woman who has participated in one of our perinatal mental health um, groups that we run for out of women's health and family services. Um, so we're going to look at why it happens, um, who it happens to, how do we, what we can do to, to work with that, and where to go for help. So there's, you see on your printout there are quite a, it's quite an extensive list of resources for people to access. Um, just our disclaimer, encouraging anyone who um, needs it to get some professional assistance as soon as they can. So a little bit about me, I did start already, so ignore, uh, ignore it, the rest of you who heard it. Um, I'm a, a wife and mother, I've got two boys, um, they've grown up and left home now. But I do recall as a young mum being um, incredibly overwhelmed, feeling very isolated because I had my first child in the country, um, in the Kimberley actually. Um, and consequently didn't have family, friends, or did have friends, but didn't have a huge support network around me. Um, so I do appreciate where people are coming from, particularly in the more isolated areas of our state, around um, having that backup that is really important. Um, I've worked as a registered nurse for a long time, and uh, as a midwife for about 10 to 12 years of that time, <coughs> excuse me, which I loved. Um, but because I don't work in a hospital setting, I have actually allowed my midwifery registration to lapse recently. Um, however, it doesn't detract from the fact that I had all those years of knowledge and experience in working in the field. So um, today we're going to look at uh, what is postnatal depression, what does that mean, that terminology. Um, common challenges and stressors that contribute to that, the signs and symptoms that people might exhibit, um, what can we do to help ourselves if we find we are feeling like that, um, who else can help or what can help, what, what works basically, um, considering um, partners because um, definitely they're affected as well. And then lastly, the support services and networks that are available for people. So, um, one of the things that printouts you would have received is this one here, which is actually using um, feelings to express how what's going on for us. Um, excellent for you people who are out there working in the field and for someone who is um, and is suffering from some symptoms, then it's a really good one to look at. In fact, every day, even if you put it on your fridge and say, okay, I'm actually feeling um, sort of angry today, or if you're feeling um, frightened, or if you're feeling um, really sad, um, then at least everyone around you will get a good idea of where you're coming from and why you're responding the way you're responding. So what exactly is postnatal depression? Um, basically, it's a depression that occurs in women who have had a baby um, or are pregnant. And it is set at a period of time between conception of that baby and the child turning three years of age. It appears that women are most vulnerable at that time to developing or experiencing a mental health issue, i.e. depression or anxiety. We all know about baby blues, I guess. Um, how many of you actually suffered from that after you had babies? Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, so baby blues, um, affects about 70 to 80 percent of women, and it's actually um, happened around uh, within the first week following delivery of the baby. Um, usually, only lasts about 24 hours, 
and and you'll find that you know you or your patient would, or client would become very teary, um, have feelings of being overwhelmed, and unable to cope, and um, very unsure about their their future as a mother. But it is self-limiting, so it is really only for that 24-hour time frame, um, and then it will pass, and they'll come back to um, experiencing the joy of having their baby with them. Postnatal depression will go on though to affect maybe 20% of women, which is one in five. So if you consider that you're in a group of women at a play group, for example, um, and you look around you and there are 10 women there, then the odds are that two of them will have or are suffering from postnatal depression. Whether they're um, acknowledging that and getting help for that or whether they're doing their best to continue um, and um, getting on with things um, depends on the person a lot. Um, it's usually diagnosed within six weeks of birth. Um, women are the same, they exhibit the same symptoms as someone with baby blues, however it's ongoing, it's constant, there's no, there's no relief from it. Um, so it is a pretty awful place for them to be in. Postpartum psychosis comes into this perinatal period as well um, and this is um, basically one in a thousand women will suffer from this. This is the extreme. It's not common. Um, however, it is extremely urgent that someone exhibiting symptoms such as delusions, confusion, uh, mood swings, sleep and appetite disturbance and extreme feelings of guilt need urgent medical attention. Um, so I'm preaching to the converted as far as midwives are concerned. We certainly know about all this um, and the incidents of that. Um, so basically, there's a whole area of um, mental health. Those that are designated to perinatal mental health, that's why it's called perinatal mental health. It would be perinatal mental health workers, perinatal mental health groups, um, etc. Please interrupt me with any questions if I'm going too fast or there's anything you want to clarify or if you think I've missed something, then please um, let me know. So we'll move on to some of the challenges or stressors that have, can happen and certainly can contribute to um, postnatal depression or perinatal mental health issues. Sleep deprivation is a big one and basically around this one it's important to check in with someone about how they are coping with the, the loss of their normal sleeping patterns. Um, we hear of girls who are pregnant saying, um, oh I love my sleep, I love my bed, um, I don't know how I'm going to cope having to get up in the night and you know, look after a baby 24 by 7. Um, so already they're flagging in themselves that this is something that they may actually struggle with. Um, change or loss of identity. I mean, a lot of us are working women. Um, we then go from being at work full time to being at home full time. So there's a lot of issues around that um, and a lot of women struggle with that, particularly women who are in more professional occupations, um, positions of authority, um, all of a sudden they um, feel that something is actually lacking within them. Um, there's also new roles for the parents to adapt to. Um, you know, you think you know your partner really well until they're also sleep deprived or challenged um, by different stresses. Um, and that also, you know, can cause um, relationship issues between the couple. Some people will say people have had a baby to make their relationship stronger. In actual fact, having a baby is one of the major stressors that you can ever encounter as a couple. Um, so um, certainly something to keep in mind. Loneliness. Um, it's a big change to be at home with a little tiny baby who's dependent on you as to being um, out in a working world or um, with your friends, family, etc. Um, 
people sometimes move to towns um, either before they give birth to their baby or after and but in that instance it's very difficult for women to um, be out there because they have this um, added responsibility which is the next point um, and it is endless, um, it doesn't stop. Um, single mums, um, this is where they find it to be incredibly difficult sometimes um, because of that lack of having that other person to be able to share your day with um, and seeing that the baby's done, etc. Um, so a lack of freedom um, ties in with the loneliness and the increased responsibility. So certainly you can't drop everything, including the baby, and just you know duck down to the shop. The baby has to go with you, or you've got to arrange someone to mind the baby for you. So it is it is pretty um, pretty stressful at times, um, juggling everything. The loss of income is a big one for those of us who were in the workforce before we had our child, and um, being reliant on either um, social security, for example, or our partner to uh, provide us with some money, just for simple things sometimes. But having that um, that loss of income can be incredibly stressful for people. So we can see that um, these are just some of the really simple ones. So then, we'll, any questions around any of that? Now it's not rocket science, is it? But all of this is actually can build up to be bigger than men her. Um, you know, you could have one or a couple or all of those factors coming in on you, um, and you can you can imagine can't you how difficult that makes everything feel. So predisposing factors to postnatal depression. Um, one of these is um, a personal or family history of um, anxiety, depression, or mental health illness. Um, stands to reason that if someone has that in their background then they are going to be slightly more at risk of developing postnatal depression. This personality type, this basically is a perfectionist um, or people pleaser. Um, someone who worries about what people think. This person or personality type um, nothing will be perfect in other words. So it makes it very difficult. Um, some women in this group will knock themselves out. They'll be exhausted already from having had a baby and then they will actually um, work really hard at making sure the house is immaculate, the baby's always perfectly presented. Um, they themselves look as if they've stepped out of a fashion magazine. Um, you know, that's an incredibly hard um, role to be consistent with and to keep up with um, and in inevitably the cracks will start to show um, and that person will, will need some help. Another one is pregnancy complications and or loss um, and obviously anything, we all want to have perfect baby, we all want to have an amazing pregnancy but sometimes that do doesn't happen. Um, we want to have the perfect birth um, we may want to have no analgesic um, during the labour and find out that we end up with an emergency um, very infection. So basically um, anything that, that goes contrary to what our expectations are of our pregnancy and the labour and the delivery and also following delivery with the baby, so if the baby is unwell or has any complications or any um, ongoing health issues that are going to impact on, on the baby and yourselves, the family, then all that is, is definitely uh, it's a lot to come to terms with um, and could be a predisposing factor to someone developing depression. Um, we've touched on health issues for the mother or the baby. I mean, anyone who is pregnant and has something such as, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, high blood pressure, for example, um, just gestational diabetes, mastitis, even, um, 
ongoing trash, epidemiology, discomfort or pain, um, um, anemia from perhaps um, hemorrhage post debris, all those things, including with the baby, with colic is a, is a big one, um, a, a continually screaming baby or reflux, incredibly difficult to manage and deal with. So um, all those things can certainly have an effect and set us up, if you like, for depressive symptoms. Um, stressful life events as well can include such as um, changes to our finances is one, um, moving house as mentioned, um, building or renovating, I'm not sure why, but a lot of people that I talk to seem to choose having a baby to coincide with um, moving house or renovating their house or building a house. Um, and all those things are well known as being incredibly huge stress um, events. Um, so some of the signs of, and symptoms of stress include, so if someone comes to you and, and they tell you their story um, and then they also sort of say that um, their diet is pretty bad, they have a craving for um, sweet stuff, so chocolate, sugary foods, etc. Um, they're drinking, um, they um, can't get enough coffee, coffee actually props them up, or tea, um, or caffeinated drinks, you know, those um, the boost juices and um, Red Bull, those sorts of things, that they need those or they just wouldn't cope at all with what's going on in their life. Whether they're exhausted, um, overwhelmed, um, feel that they're not managing everything as well as they normally would. Um, they have um, distressed thoughts or unexplained fear. Um, and if their breathing rate is more than 12 breaths a minute, then that's an indication that they are stressed and um, also um, feeling the feeling, the um, fight or flight response. So with stress, the, it gives us an extra adrenaline which pumps through our body, which prepares us to, to fight or to flee. Um, so you can imagine being like that all day is incredibly um, distressing. Um, relationship issues, so as I said, pregnancy and um, having a baby are incredibly stressful times for couples. They're, they can also be absolutely amazing, um, the best time in your life together, but they're, they're, they do bring up a lot of conflicting issues. So basically when we come together as a couple, um, we come as individuals with all our stuff. Um, when we are bringing a third person, as in a baby, into that um, relationship, then we have all our individual stuff to bring with us. But then where do we go from there? How do we move forward as a couple and as parents? It can be quite conflicting. Um, with conflicting values, conflicting ways of um, dealing with um, discipline um, and it all depends on what we experienced ourselves when we were um, in our own environment before we came together. Also a history of physical, sexual or emotional abuse. Um, another one too is significant loss. Um, what we found with, with mums is that they've recently lost their mother. Um, it is very difficult for them to move forward and become a mother in their own right. I know when I had my first child in Derby, I was a very independent person, had been encouraged to be like that, but as soon as I had my child, I wanted my mother to be there to share that. So someone who has lost their mother, if they have a relationship or a close relationship with them, it's extremely difficult um, because basically you want to be nurtured yourself um, and a mother has an instinctive knowledge of how to do that. Without your mother, 
difficult to um, move on and be able to, to have that nurturing um, role and protective role with your own child. How are we all going? How's all this going for you so far? All right. Um, I was just going to ask whether age plays a part in postnatal, like the age of the woman having the baby, like compared to 20s, 30s, 40s, whether they yeah. I don't have any stats or any actual information on that. Um, having obviously worked as a midwife and you guys worked at, mid at, at midwives, I found professional women leave their pregnancies until they're 30. Um, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes it seems to be more likely to develop um, PND. But usually that's if you have that associated um, perfectionist personality type as well. That seems to be the key, the link, I think. Because I know a lot of women who also um, choose not to have their babies until their late 30s, even early 40s, um, if they're lucky enough to get pregnant. And they actually um, do brilliantly because they've achieved everything they wanted to achieve in their personal and professional lives and this is the icing on the cake for them. So, um, yeah, I, I couldn't really answer that definitively. Um, but it was a great question. Thank you. Got us all thinking now. What about you out there in the midwives the month? Do you have you noticed um, any sort of correlation? No, no correlation really. It could be anyone and anyone from whatever background, experience, age. No, it's all across the board. Um, yeah. What I was going to say, Janet, is um, in regards to um, mums losing their mums, um, there's a brilliant book, Motherless Mothers, and it's written by a lady called Hope Edelman. And uh -huh. that, I, I would yeah, really recommend that. That's a wonderful book. Oh, and thank you. I, um, the reception was a little bit. Um, the audio is a little bit um, very. I wonder would you be able to email that to me at, on my real inreach address? Um, that would be great because then I can I can send that out to everyone who participated today. I'm not sure if everyone would be able to pick that up. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. So we'll move on. Um, Okay, so what you'll see in front of you when you also have the printout are symptoms of um, postnatal depression and also how mums would describe it. So this is a really important thing for the health professionals out there to be able to um, pick up the, the sentiment behind the words. Um, so, so basically um, we don't need to go through all of those but you know, you have it there in front of you to just have a look. And then the next one is the same, a similar, so the same thing. So something the mum would be displaying would be, you know, feeling irritable um, and she might say, I feel like it's exploding. Um, so you can, under you can understand how um, difficult that is for their partner um, to come to terms with and also their... Um, their family and friends. So basically this is aimed at the person suffering from postnatal depression but it's good for health providers to know also um, what works, um, what's effective and what really isn't. So um, basically the first one is um, family and friends. So um, relying on them, actually opening up to them and asking them to be supportive of our needs um, when we are feeling that we're not managing as well as we would like to. Um, so um, exercise is very important and it's recommended to get 30 minutes a day um, in the afternoon. Actually it's the best time, it's the optimal time to exercise then. Um, whether you take the baby in the pram with you, whether you um, 
um, get someone else to mind the baby for you while you're actually out doing that. So you, you have a break as well, which is very important. Um, relaxation and meditation, we're actually going to go into that a little bit further on in this presentation. Pleasurable activities. Um, this can be anything that makes you feel good about yourself. Um, for some people, particularly the perfectionists, it would be housework. Um, the idea is to set aside a, a block of time a day when you actually just concentrate on that. Um, for some people it would be gardening, um, it might be exercise. Um, basically it's anything that um, gives us a meaningful interaction with ourselves and other people, um, makes us feel more competent and gives us a sense of achievement and purpose. So in other words, the opposite to that feeling of stress and overwhelm that women with postnatal depression tend to suffer with. Um, restful sleep. This is a tricky one. As we all know, when we've got babies or children in the house with us, it's pretty tricky. Um, and basically, um, a nap in the afternoon is actually not really recommended. I mean, you could only really get out of it um, what you need to if you only do it for 10 minutes. Um, anything over that will detract and actually set you up, set your circadian rhythm up if you like, to um, to fail when you actually do need to go to sleep at night. So um, power nap of 10 minutes is good. Um, anything over that is, is actually not beneficial. Um, making sure your sleep routine is as good as you can get it. Um, so, you know, not doing anything stimulating before you go to bed, drinking and not drinking caffeinated drinks, not drinking alcohol, not having spicy, spicy dinner or too much food, not having chocolate um, as well um, because of the caffeine in it. Um, so things, having a nice warm shower, warm bath, um, a, a herbal relaxing drink or something, those things are really just basic, but they're helpful. Um, and accept that some nights are going to be brilliant and other nights are not going to work very well at all. Um, okay. So communicating your needs effectively, I mean, with communication. So only 7% um, of our communication comes across as words. The tone is 38%, so the way we actually say that and our body language is 55%. So making sure that we're not contradicting ourselves by saying everything is fine, um, but you know, jiggling around or being really anxious or looking stressed as well, because that, that's not people are not going to it's not going to give them the right message. Um, so setting aside 30 minutes worry time a day um, is a good one. Um, and beyond that, not going there. Um, looking at your goals, so looking at short-term goals. Short-term is um, 0 to 12 months. Um, Medium-term is um, 12 months to 5 years and long-term is 5 years plus. Okay, so um, basically trying to put that in as a uh, distance note, if you like, from your everyday um, what's going on for you every day, um, and making sure that your goals are smart, so um, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So just an acronym there to to help that all together. And self resolution. So being knowing that that um, this is something that is going to pass and that you are going to get through it is really important. So that little self-talk we can do, which is helpful. Any questions on any of that? No? Okay. Um, other support options? Um, okay, we've got um, phone lines, um, which are brilliant, and I've got some of those at the end. Um, keeping a journal so or a diary um, can be helpful just to write down how you're feeling. 
if you find it difficult to um, divulge that to someone else. Using um, internet sites and blogs are fantastic, particularly for those of you, you know, you're in um, country areas. Um, that's a great way to be able to access other people in the same situation and circumstances as yourself. Um, Playgroups um, are excellent. Um, definitely getting involved in those. Um, they're all about kids and mums, so um, that's a great support network. Um, going to um, an exercise group or joining a walking group um, with the baby is, is brilliant as well. Do, do any of you have anything like that um, in Bridgetown? Is there anything like that, Ashley? Yeah, it's mostly older people in the walking group, but they would certainly, I know that they would obviously embrace a new mum, I definitely. I mean, um, I know in, in some areas they actually have a um, boot camp for people. Um, oh, yes, I've got boot camp here in town, is, um, and there's also a lot of things offered up at the rec centre, everything from Pilates through, and I think it's about three or four different places that do yoga, as well as Tai Chi. So we're actually pretty spoiled in that respect down here. Yeah, that sounds great. Brilliant. And what about in, in, in um, Tom Price? There's two play groups, um, antenatal and postnatal exercise classes, a walking group. Excellent. I know it's yeah. Excellent. That's, that's brilliant. That's so important, isn't it, in places that are quite isolated to have um, that community sort of um, gathering. Yeah. Um, some of the other things are just even just finding a friend um, and having a chat and also um, or your mum or, or you know close rally, neighbour, popping over to see your neighbour, doing something like that and also um, meeting someone for a coffee or lunch or whatever. Um, yeah. um, there's always the option of starting a community group yourself if you're um, in a situation where you think that would be great to do but it's not already in my town, then certainly that's an option. So um, what else will help us? So from a person suffering from postnatal depression's perspective, certainly support groups, um, counselling or individual therapy. Um, we actually here in rural InReach offer a one-on-one -on -one counselling service by video conference. So um, if someone wanted to talk to myself um, or even um, the coordinator from the perinatal mental health program, then that's certainly an, an option. Um, there are uh, treatment groups and some therapy groups, um, seeing your local community health nurse and your GP. Often, um, a woman suffering from postnatal depression will be picked up by either her child health nurse or her GP, um, which is great. Um, there may be an, there may be instances where medication is definitely um, warranted, and certainly is very helpful. Um, and in severe cases, as in the postnatal psychosis, then hospital admission is certainly um, definitely needed. Um, it, research and certainly stats have shown that a combination of counselling and medication is the most effective form of treatment for postnatal depression. Um, get quite a lot of resistance from mums who don't want medication, particularly if they're breastfeeding. However, the range of medication available these days is um, able to take that into consideration and women can continue to breastfeed as well as have um, particular medications. Um, so that's really a great step forward for those, those women. Um, so with the therapy, um, basically what that's about is looking at self-care strategies, including relaxation, meditation. Um, it looks at building up support networks for, for the women, definitely increases positive thinking style, 
and challenges unhelpful thinking patterns. Um, also looks at assertiveness in communication skills um, because that's essential um, for someone to have their needs met. Letting go of negative thinking can be pretty tricky. That's why it actually is important to practice it. Um, basically, it's um, relax, relaxation first. Um, asking yourself what, what I'm experiencing right now and acknowledging the negative thoughts for about 30 seconds to one minute and then let them go. Um, I don't know about you, but it is, it is normal for us all to have negative thoughts from time to time. It only becomes an issue when they become our only thoughts and we focus in on them and we find it very difficult to let them go. So <clears throat> therapy will work with that and actually assist someone to be able to do that. So it's very essential to be able to ask for help. Um, so to have the realisation that you are the most important person in your world. Um, Mums tend to put themselves on the back seat, on the back burner. Um, they give to everybody else and find themselves right at the bottom of the pecking order. Um, what I found in my own life experience is that if I'm feeling fine and good about myself, then my world runs smoothly. If I'm feeling stressed or pressured or negative, then anything that's going to go wrong will definitely go wrong. Um, and this is all around that um, being able to express yourself and say, you know what, I'm actually having a bad day today. Um, could I ask you to help me with this? Or could I um, just ask you to give me a um, Could I ask you to um, take the baby for a walk for 20 minutes or something like that? Okay, so it's being able to um, reach out and acknowledge that you're not perfect not going to be a brilliant day today, but that, that's actually okay. Um, I just want you to try and visualise now um, a baby's mobile hanging above the baby's cot. Um, the window is open, the breeze is coming in, and the pieces of the mobile are moving. What's important to remember here is that each piece is attached independently to the hanger. Um, but the mobile itself moves as a whole. And the reason for that is that um, as one piece moves, it generates movement amongst the rest of the pieces. And what happens then, of course, is that that's an analogy of our relationship. So um, when we reach out, we actually are able to um, promote communication and relationships in our, um, our own little um, family and core community. Ashley, have you got someone new in there? No? Just popped in to say hi. Okay. Um, what about our partners? Um, okay. Difficult for our partners that when we are feeling down um, and we're struggling with um, something that a lot of men would think women can do as easily as falling off a log. Um, how can they support us? Basically, it's about you being able to reach out and ask for that help and explain that things are not as brilliant as you had thought they were going to be, um, that you are struggling. And what I've found when I'm counselling women who um, actually get to that point is that they're 50% on the road to recovery. Um, being able to reach out and ask for that support and that help is a big step um, and definitely is a sign that that person is going to be okay. Um, 
So with with men, it's it's not <coughs> excuse me, it's not uncommon. It's not common, but it's not uncommon either for them to also um, become very stressed. Some men will actually develop depression themselves and not be able to cope with um, what's going on for their wives or partners, um, and will actually need some assistance from a GP or um, some some um, mental health provider as well. Um, include them um, in everything that's happening to us. So um, GP visits, um, child health nurse visits, mental health professional visits, um, counselling um, is also inclusive of, of the partners as well. Um, it's a really great, a lot of men don't understand it and so to be able to have that explanation around what's going on for their partner is actually very grounding and very reassuring. Um, men can access the online sites as well, um, it's not just for women. There are men's helplines as well, which I haven't included, but certainly they're available. Um, encouraging them to get some support from a close friend, um, family member, um, someone else who, who they know has gone through this, a similar thing um, with their own partner is invaluable. Men like to relate to men, um, whether that's at the pub or at a sporting venue or event, whatever. Um, it's still something that's really, really beneficial. So just moving on to mindfulness and relaxation. This is actually a big, um, big plus in someone's life, in all our lives, really. Um, what it does is it encourages us to be the opposite to being on autopilot. Um, it's about experiencing the world in the here and now. And what you find with someone suffering from postnatal depression is that they actually can't do that. That's almost an impossibility. Um, they can't let go of things. They struggle to focus, so their um, ability to think clearly is compromised as well. It also develops um, the ability to manage unhelpful um, or negative thoughts and feelings. So with, with postnatal depression, someone who is in that negative thought cycle or pattern, um, mindfulness and, re and relaxation is definitely um, beneficial for them. Um, raises your awareness of your whole experience by helping you to become the observer of your emotions. So this means it helps you to get that distance. So you could be sitting in an absolute state of fog. Um, if you can practice mindfulness, it will actually enable you to detach and be able to look back at where you were and will put you into a different space and a different place. So I can't recommend it highly enough. Um, and I, I actually have a, an exercise here. Would you like to do it with me right now? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, so basically what it is, it, um, it's just sitting yourself comfortably. Um, close your eyes or look at a focus softly on the floor. Imagine you are looking at a stream. Notice everything about it, the colour, how deep it is, how wide it is, how fast it's flowing. Notice there are leaves floating on top of the stream, being carried away as it flows away. Be aware of your thoughts and place each one as it appears onto a leaf, then send it gently down the stream. Continue to do this for one to two minutes or until you feel calm, peaceful and focused.
How's everyone going? What was that like for you all? I nearly fell asleep. <laughs> There's a danger of that. <laughs> Okay, thank you for doing that. Um, that's just a really simple one. There are lots around. There are lots on the internet as well. Um, but certainly if you could get into the habit of doing that every day, um, that would certainly help with the focus. Okay. okay, so we're moving on to the supports now. Basically, I've divided it up into internet and phone. Um, so the internet support sites are there and you've got that on your printout. We've put the mining one in for people who have fly-in, fly-out um, partners. Um, they have their own different set of um, pressures and stress in their lives. So it's very valuable to have that. There's a few more as well. Obviously, Angala is there. Um, the FIFO families one is interesting because it um, can actually join a blog, um, which is great. Um, the phone support lines, um, um, and also those ones. 